Uh, looks like we are set. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Get what people kind of trickle in as they come, as they come come along. So, uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, I, can everybody hear me? Yes, no, maybe. Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is John Belsick. I'm the president of the McKinley Park Development Council. And I, like I said, I appreciate you guys all coming out here tonight um, to kind of listen to what we have to talk about. We got a couple up updates about some, some grants that we won, one that we have kind of in the pipeline uh, that we're um, uh, looking to hear, hear back from and we're, we're pretty confident about. Uh, it, was a, it was a really good experience, but we'll, we'll talk mo more about that. Um, I'm going to share my screen here. I can do that. Let's see. Share that. And then we'll hit this. There we go. Okay. So just real quick agenda. Only a couple things here, here tonight. So we've got, um, we're going to talk about our uh, ETOD grant application. We had previously uh, won a very small pilot program, uh, but then we went for phase two. Um, so we have some updates on that. We'll talk about uh, the Chicago Community Challenge application that, that we submitted. Uh, was it two weeks ago now? I think it was two weeks ago. Um, there's a couple CMD buildings uh, that we'll talk about tonight as well. And then lastly, um, we're looking for some new board members uh, that, we're hope that we're looking to fill some spots before the end of the year. Um, so we'll tell you a little bit about uh, what's kind of required of that if you're interested. Um, so the first thing, uh, we did this E2D pilot program and I'll have uh, Liz talk a little bit about that, but just to give you a little bit of context and background, we made it through both the first round and second round of applications. So it's a very small grant was the first one and then we had a larger grant. Um, and some of the, I guess the main focus of this project was to look at the, some of the vacant lands around the, um, uh, 35th and Archer Orange Line Station. So if you look in the, the map here on the right, uh, there's a, several vacant or underused parcels uh, that we're hoping to kind of get um, some renderings or some, some, some help kind of uh, come up with a community vision for, for that. So if you want, if, if Liz, you want to kind of further elaborate, uh, please go right ahead. Sure. So we, um, so a couple things. One, we got a, it's a, that first round is actually, it was a separate, um, it's a micro grant that we received um, to help really with taking a look at our, like within McKinley Park, all of the equitable, the ETOD eligible areas and helping us do some visioning work, um, particularly for, with the micro grant, um, we've talked about having that focused a lot on Ashland actually in that, um, in that whole corridor there, um, but really, um, you know, sort of doing some work to get a, a sharper kind of vision from the neighborhood about what kind of equitable transit oriented development we want in those areas. Um, so that's the, the first micro grant was around that. And now we've been um, accepted into um, a cohort um, of organizations around the city um, that will be working with Elevated Chicago uh, to really um, to try to launch projects at um, different parts in different parts of the city around equitable transit oriented development. And that larger grant is going to help us um, sort of build out some of the visioning work that we're doing at the 35th and Archer um, uh, at the Orange Line Station. Um, also um, help us do some traffic studies there about what it's like now and what it is that we want to make it more pedestrian friendly and uh, bike friendly. Um, also get us um, some technical assistance and guidance around uh, what are the kind of zoning things and other sort of levers that we can use and strategies we can use to really one incentivize um, uh, or sort of development there that is um, more affordable, accessible, and really kind of meets the community's needs. Um, and then what are, you know, what might be some strategies that we can take to, um, to block types of development that aren't really in line with the community vision, the community plan. Um, so that grant is going to allow us to do that. Plus, we're in a cohort of other groups 
that we'll be working together um, to build strategies across the city around how we really um, make sure that uh, the ordinance that was passed for equitable transit oriented development um, really does help to achieve that um, in, the, in those areas of the city. Um, I'll stop there. Um, I don't know if anyone else who's been involved with that wanted to add anything. Um, I see Kate here with us today. Um, yeah. Or if you want to talk a little bit about the session that happened this morning with the city. Yeah, that's what I was going to bring up. So the city did host a session this morning to get some feedback on some policies that they are considering. Um, one of the items that they brought up but did not put up for conversation um, was the potential to ban drive throughs in ETOD zones. So it's good that it's on their radar. Um, but this session today was mostly about they've got like five categories of items that they want to forward and give me a sec to look at the notes again so I don't miss any of them. Um, one is to, to expand TDOD incentives across a bar geography. Um, to, oh, another is to strengthen affordability requirements and incentives for building housing in TOD zones. Um, some, another is uh, to promote walkability, access and mobility. So that was a big thing that we talked about here in terms of like last mile program, pro, last mile issues. Um, heavy traffic versus pedestrian traffic and cyclists, um, actual access to the L, um, and a lot of our friends further south than us um, were especially concerned about uh, bus lanes and potholes. So there's a lot of like all variety of, of things that people are worried about. Um, and then the last one was general land use concerns and possibilities of making some form of TOD mandatory. So we did have a lot of discussion about affordable housing too, um, realizing that like, you know, we lost this lot to the Dunkin' Donuts and created a safety hazard for getting into the L and that's just a losing proposition for everybody. So we did discuss that and also the need for things like larger family sized units. Um, you know, because we do have a lot of large families around here. So uh, I, there's going to be more conversations like this one. People were receptive, but they also weren't really ready to get in the weeds. They wanted more of a listening session today. Cool. Thanks. Uh, and then, correct me if I'm wrong, part of, part of this um, work was also to work with someone from UIC, or is that something else, or am I confusing that? So I'm muted. Okay, I can. Yeah. So we <laughs> reached out to, is for the for the work we want to do to sort of build out some um, sort of renderings and do the visioning work. We've reached. We've been in contact with the UIC Department of Urban Planning um, and had a meeting with them along with a sort of prior student of theirs who now has a, a sort of consulting firm that does um, you know does this kind of visual rendering work um, around the possibility of having them. Um, support the work, uh, support our work, and have this be part of a project that a group of their um, graduate level students take on with guidance from the professor so that we would get um, those folks using kind of what we're trying to do here as a way for them to be learning and a way for us to be actually um, moving some of the work and getting resources and support on it. And I want to point out about that too, that that's not just about the L. Um, the focus of that conversation is more about Ashland Avenue, which is also zoned for TOD and yeah. um, more differently vacant. Yeah. yeah, there's yeah, there's there's some nuances to both of these sites <laughs> here that that I think we should all that are be helpful to kind of have fleshed out. Uh, does anyone have any questions or comments uh, about about this? Uh, you guys feel free to ch chime in. Um, at, at any point, either in, in the chat or, or raise your hands. Um, I see there's a question. Weren't traffic studies already done for the 30, around 35th Street in Archer uh, as part of the neighborhood plan? Uh, I believe there was a little bit of traffic studies done. Um, I don't recall it being explicitly uh, stated in, in the plan itself. I know there was um, some renderings about how to re redesign that intersection was in, 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 in the plan by putting in uh, different kinds of bump outs. And I think there was like a, a, a better pedestrian kind of island, uh, if, if, I, I, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, so, th so there was definitely that, but I don't explicitly remember a, um, 
plan or uh, traffic study actually talked about for, for this section, actually. Um, where's the... Then Kate says, uh, one other interesting thing about the today's meeting, the city, a lot of the staffers were from public health. We talked a lot about air, air, air pollution. So that's, you know, that's always um, kind of in the back of people's minds is air pollution and, and you know, and environmental justice. You know, we are a minority na neighborhood. So that's, that should always be um, kind of, um, you know, at least there in the periphery for a lot of these, these discussions about how, uh, about how to handle stuff, stuff like that. Any other questions, comments? Uh, like I said, feel free to raise your hand um, or put something in the chat. Um, I'm happy to answer them as best we can, or at least find the answers for, for you if you can't answer them tonight. No? Okay. I'm not seeing any hands. So then we'll go on to the next thing, um, which was the uh, Chicago Community Challenge Grants. Um, it was award. It was. It, it's an award for up to 100. Or sorry, 1.5 million dollars. Um, it's for uh, one award per per each of the seven regions of the city. So we're in the southwest region. Um, we submitted an application for uh, the park itself. Uh, it's five parts, and it's a collaboration between us, uh, the community garden, the mutual aid garden, the play garden, and then. Um, MPAC, so the advisory council was at least uh, we 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 spoke with them uh, about uh, this project. Um, we presented on was it the fourth, I believe, of this month, um, and then there was a survey. We presented to the city uh, as well as two other projects that were in our re region as as well. Um, one for improving a uh, school playground. And then one for improving uh, a different park, uh, specifically their ball diamonds, which experience fre frequent flooding and other issues um, um, that they have. Uh, I will say that even if, well, it, well, it seems like we're competing against these two other projects, um, the city stated that um, they will be at least on the radar of other city departments. So while, you know, whoever doesn't, win this one one and a half million dollars they'll at least be you know the either the parks department or whatever appropriate department will be aware of the need um and then we and then they, they can be put in the queue through a different um pipe pipeline to maybe get those addressed possibly in a smaller capacity um but it, it's 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 not it's at least not a kind of one and done deal and it's never going to happen kind of thing so there's some possibilities for us to even if we don't win it i don't recall when they said that they'll announce it but i think it was sometime early december um if, if kate you were kind of spearheading this do you know a specific date or did they sort of just say early december and that was it ah hi yeah so, um, so they did not give specific dates, um, okay. and we'll see. Um, one thing they I want to point out too about the additional funding, they actually said that all these projects have already been put in various queues. Oh. Now, it's not it's not a firm commitment to fund any of them, but they are going to be in the twenty twenty two some kind of thing where they go through all the stuff they're going to build this year. Um, so they are already in the hopper, but um, but that doesn't mean they'll be selected. So um, so that was okay. nice. It's a, it's a soft commitment, but also because I think the other projects um, are certainly worthy, uh, but also probably easier to fund by other means. Yeah, um, and definitely cheaper than ours. So <laughs> let's be honest about that. We were like, if it's one point five million, let's see what we can get. Um, but I do think they were. Um, it was it was a really for those of you who didn't see the meeting um it is recorded and we can put the link in the chat um it was really wonderful to get that kind of support from all of our neighbors um including people from the other projects and i did want to point out give a shout out to the play garden too because one of the groups that wanted to improve their um the area around their school actually opened their presentations with pictures of our play garden and said we want this and that was really heartwarming so Um, yeah, so whoever asked about impact, so that's not it. Impact was not officially. Um, we did get a letter of support from impact. Dana Calderon was involved, but not in her actual capacity as impact because you are correct. Um, how the neighborhood can participate. Um, at this point, the survey is closed. Uh, but we'll keep you posted. 
and let you know what happens. Uh, one of the things we'll need if we get the grant are volunteers because the city is going to build this for us, but they're not going to pay for Even if we get the grant, they're not going to pay for everything. The community garden will still need volunteers to help plant some of these things. Um, living things are not covered under the grant, so you can also donate to the community garden or the play garden um, for trees, shrubs, etc. And um, all of these groups are always looking for volunteers to help maintain these spaces because they are volunteer. Um, they are watched over by volunteers. Yeah, if, if you get like, like Kate said, the uh, presentation is up on the city's website on, under the community challenge page. Uh, but for those of you who just kind of a brief high level overview, um, the proposal for uh, the skate rink portion of it was to make the skate rink open all all year round for uh, both ice and roller or or inline skating um so it includes things like a new surface and new surface uh, uh kind of uh, concession stands and th things like that uh, the other end of the park where the where the current community garden is uh the mutual aid garden would be relocated there um, there would be, you know, improved infrastructure. So like a new water line and, and paths and fencing would be put in as, as well as a couple new beds. Um, and like Kate said, there's some um, soft infrastructure, let's call it. So like trees and, and shrubs and things like that, that wouldn't have been necessarily covered. Uh, but uh, the community garden is looking for volunteers to either to help, you know, with, with that portion of the project that may or may not be covered by the grant itself, if we were to win it. So that's just a very high level overview. Uh, thanks, Kate, put the video in, in, the, in, in, the, in, the, in, in the chat there. All right. Um, one thing that I don't have a slide for, there is, um, we just found this out earlier this week, I believe. Uh, there's a couple buildings for sale in the CMD, so the Central Manufacturing District over on uh, Pershing, specifically the clock tower itself, and three of the buildings um, which in the posting, they, they didn't say which one it was, but it's, it's any, it's any of, of the three um, a, th a through F buildings that are kind of in the back there, just behind um, the NLEI building. They didn't say which, which, which three were for sale. They just said three, three of, of, of these six are up, up for, for sale. The whole package, so the clock tower and the buildings are going for 12 million. I don't know that it's, can broke it can be broken out into you know, one or more separate pieces. Uh, it's probably just a big one package and done. Um, and it is listed as a uh, potential for, what did it say? It said, uh, you know, office space or mixed use. So meaning big things like um, apartments or condos or something um, could, could be used. It, it is currently zoned for manufacturing, I believe. Um, and, uh, we will be keeping an eye on kind of um, what is the comma of that. So we'll we'll try try to you know stay ahead of it. But um, if they don't do things like zoning changes, um, it's kind of hard to get public knowledge of kind of what's going on. Uh, but we'll you know we'll we'll try to keep our ear ear to the ground. If you guys hear anything, please let us know. Um, we'll be happy to kind of help uh, look at it. Uh, are there currently art studios in the currently in the clock tower? Yep. Yeah, there used to be art studios. There's actually a cool video on YouTube uh, of some of an urban explorer who I don't want to say broken entered, but entered into the clock tower, and and you and you can see remnants of people's apartments inside the clock tower. It's actually pr pretty cool. So there's like fridges and stuff. So there's there's at least three or four different apartments in there, as well as an old water tower. Um, so it's kind of cool. I don't. I I'm kind of secretly hoping that they turn that into condos again. That'd be kind of neat, or or some kind of working space. Um, but that's, that's not for me to decide really, but we can cer certainly offer our suggestions. Uh, I will say that one of the chapters of the neighborhood plan that was mentioned earlier, actually, um, is about revitalizing the CMD itself. So this is, uh, potentially a, a piece of the puzzle here about how to, you know, bring things like light, light manufacturing in and, um, you know, green infrastructure, you know, mixed use development, things like that, um, that can be uh, a net, hopefully a net positive for the neighborhood. Uh, I see a question here. Uh, does a clock tower have landmark status? I, I don't believe it's, a, it's officially um, 
designated as a, as a landmark or, or historic place. I, if I remember correctly, it's on the National Re Registry of Historic Places, but I think it's like just like one tier below what is like officially protected um, under the historic uh, properties. Uh, I forget what law, what law it is. It's, uh, yeah, I forget, I forget what law it is. It's section, one, section 106 is, is, is what the section is uh, for, for the law itself. It's a National Historic Preservation Act, I think is what it was. Yeah, that, that's what it is. Uh, but like I said, it's not officially a, a landmark. Uh, but it does have kind of a historic status that's recognized at, at least. So it's a little bit different, a, a little more difficult to uh, change things, but it, things can, it, it can be changed on the facade and things like that. I don't know if you've, you guys have driven by there recently, but there's some work being done on the three uh, easternmost buildings that the city owns, um, that they're, you know, they're refacing it, they're, they're, they're doing some other work, work in there. So things can be done to it. And I think those have got, um, some level of historic status to it as, 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 as well. Uh, any other questions about this or the community challenge grant? No, okay. Then I'm gonna move on to the last piece here. We're flying through this. Move on to the last piece here. Um, we're looking for new board members. So we're looking to fill some spots on, on our board. Um, so there's not a whole lot of requirements to be on the board, uh, but there's a couple, um, there's two, there's one that I really think is kind of really important. You should either be a neighborhood resident or a neighborhood business owner uh, to be on, on the board. Um, so that's kind of kind of the, the set in stone rule, uh, but you, things like prior board experience or not-for-profit not experience, that's not required. I know a lot of us who are currently on the board didn't have it before we started, um, and it, it's it certainly it certainly does help, uh, but it's not 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 a requirement. Uh, the other thing that we really look for in uh, board members, or other board members, would be that you're you know you're willing to you're willing to participate and, and you're willing to pay whatever skills or talents that you have, or just overall willingness. You're looking to pay it forward and kind of be an advocate for the neighborhood. We um, you know, we want, we, we want someone who can, some people who can be, uh, kind of leaders and champions for, uh, folks in the neighborhood, you know, to go to those meetings with city, that, at city council when no, when no one else wants to talk with the all other men, you know, come up with, um, neighborhood driven plans, uh, that or projects such as like the TOD project or, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, things like revitalizing the CMD and activating the parks or, you know, green infrastructure project, things like that, that are, you know, outlined in our neighborhood plan, for example. Um, but, uh, you know, things that kind of, we're looking for people to kind of get, get, get kind of down in the nitty gritty and uh, kind of do the work that the they neighborhood uh, you know, seem, seems to want is, is uh, kind of looking forward to things like that. Uh, let's see, there's a question. How many board seats are you looking for to fill? And why is the board looking for new members prior to the next general election? When, when is that, by the way, what happened? Uh, so we're looking to fill uh, five seats on, on the board. Uh, we, this, is sort, this is the general election. Last year we had it about November, uh, I think it was October. So we're one, so we're one, month, we're one month later than we normally would have been um, just due to us switching to a every other month type of meet, meet, meeting. Um, so the, 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 this is our annual call for board members uh, that we usually have. So like, like I said, we have got five open spots or really six open spots. Uh, we've got a couple people already in, in, interested in. One of the spots is um, Liz's spot. She is graciously running again. She's you know willing to stay on the team. Um, so she's, uh, uh, you know, willing to stick it out with us for a little while longer, at least. Um, so we're looking forward forward to that. Uh, depending on how many people are in, interested in positions, uh, we'll kind of dictate um, how we go about the general elections. In the past, we've done a, a simple yes, no vote. Uh, but like I said, if, if we just have a couple pe people and they're in interested in there's, you know, less people than spots, then, you know, we'll come up with, with something. But we're looking to fill it 
by the beginning of the year, by, so by January 1st. Uh, so if you want to please get your submissions in by December 1st, I think that's two, two weeks, two, two and a half weeks. Um, so it's, it's, it's a fast turnaround, um, but we appreciate any volunteers that you, um, uh, any, any volunteer that you guys want to do. Um, let's see, there's, I saw a question. Uh, what are the duties of a board member because of so? Uh, like I said, some of the duties that we do are, um, well, why don't well, why why don't I let some of my other board members talk? I've been doing a lot of talking. So, Kate, you you want to talk about what we actually do? Yeah. So, like a lot of the board members' work is um, determined as we go along, as we look at opportunities that come our way. So, for example, um, Liz is usually is our point person for a lot of the ETOD stuff, and I'll let her talk about like those specifics. Um, it's kind of project by project as things come our way. So, for example, the Chicago Works initiative was an, was offered to us, and we said, "Hey, we can do this," and we put out. Um, we put out a request to our partner organizations in the neighborhood and say, hey, who has ideas for this? And then um, my Anthony helped, uh, Anthony helped wrangle the people, but I ended up like kind of organizing these four groups to put forth a proposal. So it's, it's everybody's proposal, but we are helping facilitate what goes on in the neighborhood. Um, likewise, if there's board members bring things in and say, hey, we have this grant opportunity, or we heard that the alderman is thinking about this and we should weigh in on it. Um, so it's really about anything that goes on in the neighborhood that affects um, our physical condition. So that might be uh, businesses or polluters moving in. It might be we think the neighborhood needs X and is there a way we could do it? It really kind of depends on our individual bandwidth. Um, and that's why we really need more people who do have some personal bandwidth to contribute to the work. And that is the reason that we have seats open is we have several people who just said, I don't have the time and that's that's good and honorable that they're moving over so that somebody who has the time can move in and help. Um, it's not a hard commitment about what it is, but I mean for myself it's probably a solid couple hours a week. Um, and i'll let the others address that as well, um, I want to point out a couple big initiatives that we've done this year, so you get an idea of the kind of projects we work on, so you just heard about the CTOD grant and the Chicago works initiative. Um, Anthony, who's not able to join us because he's stuck at work tonight, also uh, was our point person for a big um, uh, for a cohort run by the state to help bring more broadband uh, options into our community. So those are the kinds of things that we're involved with. Like it's a variety, but it's all at some point infrastructure and development related. Yeah, that those are all good points. And you know, at the at the end of at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is we're, we're trying to be advocates for the neighborhood. So you know, we, you know, I, I think we 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 do our best to kind of get the neighborhood's opinions on things. You know, through things like surveys and talking with folks and and kind of getting a feel about what you guys want to see. And then we are the ones that kind of take it to the next level. So we take it to the ultimate, we take it to the city, we take it to whoever's got the answer to the question or can help move it along for, for further. Um, so kind of one of the things that were, you know, very early on, I think early, earlier this year, we, we looked at was, you know, um, how we can better activate 35th street, you know, make, make it a main street experience. And part of that was, you know, talking with uh, CDOT to see if we can get rid of the truck route, um, designation that's on there so with things like semis can't go down there because people express that you know they think that that's not necessarily safe if you want to make it a pedestrian street you know you should have really tr trucks or limited truck traffic down that street so um you know how can how can we bring different businesses in or more businesses in that people want 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 to see you know we'll look for evidence like that you know we'll work we we'll try to work the uh work different channels to to do that um, and then kind of the backbone about what is sort of driving this, like I said, is the neighborhood plan and kind of the neighborhood vision that we worked for two and a half years on, again, with the, with the neighborhood in, a, in probably our biggest effort so far, um, which is Liz put actually in, in, in the chat there. And that was a collaboration with CMAP for us. Um, are there any other questions or if anyone wants to talk more about uh, kind of I see a couple other board members on here. What 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 they do, um, things like that. Liz, I 
you, no. you, covered, you covered it. Right. Um, I think that, you know, I think the there's, um, you know, the the neighborhood plan and the vision that came out of that has a whole set of different recommendations that aren't going to where if if anyone's going to make those things happen, it's got to be us. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's really what it's about is we got um, mm -hmm. to sort of get in around the things we want to see in the neighborhood. Good point. Any other comments? Questions, concerns about any of the stuff we talked about tonight? You know, if you're in, if you think of a question late later, um, you can always email us at the McKinley Park Development Council at gmail.com. You know, we're happy to answer questions. We we try to get back to you, you know, within a day or so of of getting email. Doesn't always happen, but um, we 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 try try our best to do that. Um, we're more than willing to ask questions and you know all we ask you guys to do if you want to throw, throw, throw your name in a hat just please just submit your name in a short couple sentences about why you want to join the board either you know what what tools you can bring what tools you can bring to the table what skills what knowledge you know what whatever or, or just kind of hey you know i think you guys do great work i want to be a part, part, part of it I, I don't know how, how it can help but i just want to help that's always a you know that's also a good answer too uh, like like kate said we're looking for people who want to you know get their hands dirty and, and do good things for the neighborhood that we all, you know, love and live in and, and think is a great place. I guess um, if I could throw in one last thing there, if you listen to all this and you're like, I don't know if I can do that, that sounds complicated, or I don't know if I have the skills to do that, then please write us and let's talk if you're interested. Mm -hmm. And Elvira, if you've listened to this and you said, you know, I want to help, but I don't have that kind of time in my life right now, then don't write us off. Please just keep showing up. Like everybody didn't have to be on the board. We also need people who just show up when we have community meetings and tell people about what we're doing. And that means a lot. Yep, yep, very, 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 very true. It's, it's uh, you know, if you, if you don't wanna be involved in the board capacity, you can always vo vo volunteer for the different efforts. You know, Liz is, Liz's e ETOD project, that needs vo vo volunteers. We had a bunch of volunteers for the broadband projects that we did, or, you know, uh, last year. So we're always looking for people that, you know, at least show up and, and provide some input, you know, either a little or as much as either a little or a lot, we'll, we'll take it all usually. As long as it's constructive, I guess. <laughs> um, any other comments or questions? No? Uh, there we go. New, new topic, if I may, it appears that zoning at 33500 South actually will change from B3 community shopping district to residential two flat townhouses can anyone speak on this change and what might this mean for the rest of Ashland Avenue? That, I did not know that. Uh, that's a good, it's a good point. I will write this down, actually look at it. Uh, but judging, but just judging by just the, just the, what I'm reading here, there was, if I recall, there was some zone, there was some new condos being, or townhouses being built on one side of Ashland. Uh, I don't recall how many, specifically, uh, but it might have something to do with that potentially, but that will be something that I can look into and we can follow up on if you're willing to humor me here with a pen. So, like I said, we don't always have the answers, but I'm more than willing to help, you know, find those answers. Any other questions, comments? Concern. It's going once, going twice. Okay. Uh, if you want to contact us for any reason, you know, whether it's just a general question, um, you can find us a couple different ways, you know, either through, through email, uh, if we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're also on Instagram. Um, like I said, we check those things pretty regularly, or at least try, try to, and we'll get back to you usually within a day, day and a half. Um, so if there is no other questions or input from my fellow board members or any of the community. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys go and we'll and we'll sign off. And I thank you guys again for coming out, showing up. Um, you know, it's always good to see you guys, see people. You know, being willing to at least listen and, and kind of uh, join 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 the join the conversation that we're having about the neighborhood. It's always uh, you know good. Great. Uh, thanks everybody. I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna stop sharing and uh, have a good night. And we'll. See y'all in a few weeks.